lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching witchcraft and tarot is what I do. I wanted to come on here, you guys, because I recently had a consultation with a client and his statement just created an immense download where I was like, I have to get this information out, right? So one of the things that he brought up was, I wish there was a way of realizing when you're dealing with a low vibration sign so that I can be forewarned or almost know exactly what red flags to look for when dealing with the person. So you don't waste your time or so you don't allow them to turn your life upside down, right? And the moment he said this, you guys, like completely spiritual download. And I was like, I I have the cheat code for this. <laughs> so I'm going to go down all the zodiac signs so that you can know what to look for when dealing with a low vibration sign, okay? So we're going to start off here with Pisces. As we all know, it's Pisces season. So how to know or how to spot a low vibration Pisces. Pisces is one of the signs, if not the only sign that is the most spiritual in the zodiac sign. So if you're dealing with a Pisces and you see that they don't have any type of faith, religion, or spirituality uh, that is integrated in their everyday life or that is very important to them, this is a person that is very low vibration. Why? Because Pisces is, like I said, a very spiritual sign. And what helps them ground themselves in this lifetime is to be able to weather through their emotional turmoil by having faith or by having a belief system that anchors them um, to fully be able to believe in higher, higher spirit or higher uh, consciousness that is going to help them get through those emotional turmoils. Another thing is, you know, Pisces is ruled by Neptune and it is the planet of illusion. It is the planet of fantasy, you know, and, and just like Pisces on a very high vibration, it is a very spiritual sign. It is a very empathetic sign. It is a sign that is very compassionate by nature. Um, but when dealing with a Pisces that is low vibration, because they don't know how to weather the storm or their emotions, they do have a tendency of being selfish. And the reason for this is because they will completely um, protect themselves from hurt or experiences that they've gone through that they no longer want to deal with or haven't dealt with and they don't want to deal with again. So they become very selfish, almost narcissistic tendencies this is when you're dealing with a low vibration. You know that you are dealing with someone that is very selfish. Um, also a person that, or a Pisces that has a tendency of like partying a lot or, you know, they party a lot or they use some type of defense mechanism that helps them cope with their emotional turmoil, which is why low vibration Pisces usually are at the cusp of either uh, doing, you know, in taking a lot of pills or drugs or alcoholism. Um, it is a water energy. It is a water sign. So more than likely they will use escapism as a form to not deal with those emotions. That's how you know that you're dealing with a low vibration Pisces. So if they're not compassionate, if they are not the type uh, to be very empathetic about what you're you know, what you're going through or what you're talking about, they don't give you like that deep insight and it's very superficial. You're dating a, or dealing with a very low vibration Pisces. All right, my loves, moving on to Aries. Aries is one of the signs that is the easiest to figure out if you're dealing with a low vibration. And one of the things to notice is, do they exercise? Do they do any type of activities that helps them release that animosity and that pent up aggression, right? Because you have to keep in mind, uh, Aries is a, a sign that is ruled by Mars and Mars is the sign of aggression. It is the sign of war. It is the sign of action. So they have to be able to release all that pent up dissatisfaction or, you know, 
stress or animosity that they are naturally uh, built with, right? Um, an Aries that is high vibration is someone that is going to be very athletic or someone that uses sports or anything that has to do with their physical body to actually release uh, that aggression or that stress uh, that dealing with life, right? <laughs> they have to have some type of uh, way of releasing that. So if they are not, and we're not speaking about, let's just say, for example, you're dealing with an older Aries, obviously they're not going to be as active as the younger ones. Um, but looking back, it is definitely someone that was very much into athletic athleticism, someone that was very much into sports or boxing, anything that has to do with like releasing, being able to release that aggression. Um, so again, keeping that in mind. Also, another thing, if you're dealing with an Aries that is not intense, meaning like passionate or that physically active, you know, in the relationship, then you know you're dealing with a low vibration Aries. Why? Because this is their natural way of being. Um physicality is something that's very important to them. It is almost like something that is needed to ground them. So if you're dealing with someone that perhaps is not necessarily very physical with you, or perhaps you're the one that usually takes the initiative, uh, of course, depending on your sign, but also if you are, you know, let's just say when you started, it was very physical and all of a sudden it's kind of like flaring out it has a lot to do that you're dealing with a low vibration Aries, okay? Because they are extremely passionate and that is something that no matter their age, it will continue to be. Um, so if they're not being that way, it's a low vibration Aries. It's a person that is probably very unsatisfied or unhappy with their life or what what's going on with their life at this point in time. So that's how you can tell it is a low vibration Aries. Moving on to Taurus. Taurus is another sign that is very easy to tell when you're dealing with a low vibration Taurus. Now, one of the biggest things here is if you're dealing with the Taurus and you realize or come like they give you hints here and there that they're not that financially stable or that, you know, uh, finances is not something very important to them. You're definitely dealing with a low vibration Taurus. Taurus is a sign that, uh, like Libra, it is ruled by Venus. And Venus is all to do with, you know, abundance. It is all to do with um, benevolent energy. So from birth, uh, you guys are naturally, or Taurus are naturally uh, very lucky when it comes to uh, finances, when it comes to stability, when it comes to the finer things in life. Um, not to say that people, you know, as we progress in our years, people become more stable, et cetera. If you're dealing with the younger version, it's still finances is something that is going to be very important to them. So this is almost like paying attention. Do they have goals? Do they, you know, are they thinking about the future? If you ask them, um, Hey, what is it? Your, what is your goals and aspirations for the next two years? Even if it's a younger version, Taurus, they're going to have an idea, somewhat an idea of what it is that they want to accomplish. Why? Because it's all about, again, it is all about experiencing or getting to the point of experiencing abundance and stability. So if it is someone that you're dealing with, that is probably one of the questions that you want to ask like right away on the first or second date. What are your goals for the next coming two years? And I'm saying two years, just keeping in mind, if it is a younger version of a Taurus, they're still going to have somewhat an idea of what they want. If they're not able to tell you or they just seem all over the place when answering that question, then you definitely know you're dealing with a low vibration Taurus because Taurus, much like Capricorn and even Virgo, because they are earth signs, there has to be some type of, you know, looking towards the future and wanting or desiring that stability. Now, the shadow side of a Taurus is that, they will try to get money or get financial stability at the cost of certain things. So if you're dealing with a low vibration Taurus that is very unhappy, that is not fulfilled, maybe the type of energy that believes in the five finger discount or that believes in coming up even at your expense. So again, this is the energy of like 
dealing with someone that is always constantly dealing or thinking of like uh, rich, quick schemes or whatever, that's the type of vibe that Taurus can possess when they are on the shadow side. Moving on to Gemini. Gemini is the sign of communication, right? It is the sign of socializing. It is the sign of, you know, just good times. So how to spot a Gemini or how to spot a low vibration Gemini is pay attention to their surroundings. If this is a Gemini that is more closed off, someone that is very private in their life, you're definitely dealing with a low vibration Gemini. Geminis often have much like Aquarius, uh, the need to surround themselves with a lot of people. Um, and it's not to say that they do it all the time, but uh, they kind of feed off of other people's energies as well as they bring healing or balanced energy to those around them as well. So the way to spot a low vibration Gemini is if they seem sneaky, if they seem private, if they haven't brought you around friends or the people that they surround themselves with, you're definitely dealing with the low vibration Gemini. It's all about communication for them. So when you're dealing with the high vibration Gemini, it's easy to spot because you can see that they have a ton of friends or a lot of people that they know, and they all have different walks of life, different experiences. A Gemini that is more on the low vibration is someone that because they're so dissatisfied, they kind of become closed off and reclusive, um, almost kind of like hermit mode. And they, you know, will it's almost like they shut out the world and those that they do keep around them, um, they have all of this, you know, dissatisfaction with themselves that they project it out through communication. So they may communicate very aggressively or they may even be very judgmental. So that's how you can spot a low vibration Gemini. So points to look for their social network, the people that they surround themselves with, and, you know, basically paying attention to, you know, the people that they surround themselves with. Like I said, if it's more of a private Gemini, more like on the, you know, secretive type of private uh, Gemini. Oh, I don't really have that many friends. Oh, you know, I'd rather not, you know, post on social media that we're seeing each other, that we're dating or whatever. Major red flags because again, Gemini is all about communication. And if they are not doing exactly that, then it's definitely vibrating from a low vibration. Moving on here to cancer, how to spot a low vibration cancer. Pay attention to how they deal with their emotions. Cancer is a sign that is ruled by the moon. So this is a lot of emotion. This is a lot of kind of like Pisces. They need something that anchors their emotion, that anchors their way of dealing with the everyday life. And I've never met a high vibration cancer that did not have some type of health or mental um practice that really centers them. So as an example, cancers that go to therapy or that have some type of routine, it could be as simplistic as going, getting their nails done, going, getting their hair done. It could be as simplistic as, or as elaborate as going to get massages, going out to, um, or even integrating like meditation, um, you know, Zen time, all of that is a high vibration cancer. The ones that are on the more uh, low vibration, which is where we deal with cancers that could be extremely manipulative, a bit narcissistic, they will twist and turn the truths around so that it's convenient for them so that they can easily manipulate you. And again, like I said, if you feel or if you're dealing with the cancer and you notice that they are not necessarily open to their emotions, um, and what I mean by this is that you kind of feel or they make you feel like you kind of have to pry for information about what they're going through, what they're dealing with in their everyday life. They're not really the type to share. Then, you know, you're dealing with the low vibration cancer because cancer, like I said, is a emotional sign, right? It's ruled by the moon and the moon has different faces, right? But in those faces, a high vibration cancer will definitely let you know what's going on in their life. They Because the way they communicate is how they connect. And the way they connect is what helps them to really balance themselves out. So 
like the shell, if what they're doing is kind of being reclusive and like pulling in, keeping an exterior, almost like you have to guess what's going on in their life, you're definitely dealing with a low vibration cancer. Now, moving on here with Leo, how to spot a low vibration Leo. Now, Leo is the sign of, you know, entertainment. It is the sign of drama. It is this not drama negative way in drama. I mean, like stage presence, right? It is ruled by the sun. So whatever area life uh, Leo is in, they have to be the main character. And it's not to say in a negative way, but what I mean is that Leo, in order for Leo to feel at their highest vibration, they have to feel like they have some type of authority, like they have some type of spotlight on them. So it could be, as an example, if you're dealing with a Leo and they are doing a job where they constantly complain about it or they're very dissatisfied, run the fuck away from that Leo because it is a low vibration Leo and they do become very narcissistic. They are very pessimistic, just bad energy to be around with when they are vibrating from a low frequency. Because it is ruled by the sun, a high vibration Leo is definitely the type that is going to be very motivating, even inspiring. Um, it doesn't have to be, and it's not to say, the easiest way of, of describing this is thinking of like if, you're dealing with a Leo and they are like the CEO of a company or a manager, or they're overseeing other people, or they could even have like a normal, normal position. Right. But in some shape, way or form, they have people that look to them, uh, to that depend on them or that come to them, like, and they oversee a certain aspect of that job that they're doing, then they are, they could be vibrating from a high frequency. But if you constantly find yourself dealing with a Leo that is always like complaining about what's going on in their work life and they're more on the pessimistic side, it's because they're you're working or dealing with a low vibration Leo. Um, they have to feel some type of authority, some type of like the spotlight being on them. And it's like I said, it doesn't have to be like a very high position for them to feel fulfilled, right? Everybody has a different purpose here in life, but it is something that it has to do with respect and it has to do with, you know, people coming to them to get some type of like guidance, some type of, because Leo is the one that will make it happen type of energy. So if you are currently recently dating someone that is a Leo, pay attention to what they do for a living. Ask them things about like, you know, what is it that you do? Um, and when they start to speak to you about it, if they seem to come off as a bit dissatisfied or like I said, a bit pessimistic, a bit grim, run the fuck away because a Leo in low vibration could be like a savage um, and they will take narcissism to the next level. It is a sign that's ruled by the sun. So, but in a high frequency vibration, the people or the Leos that are around you are always extremely inspirational. Uh, there's just something about them, you know, the way they see life, the way they go towards their goals and achieving goals is just very inspiring. Uh, definitely the the life of the party. So it is a person that is very easy to get along with, uh, with everyone, really. Um, that's how you know that you're definitely dealing with a high vibration uh, Leo. Now, moving on here to Virgo. How to spot a low vibration Virgo is very simple as well. You have to keep in mind that when it comes to Virgo, Virgo is one of the signs that has a very busy mind, much like Gemini. So what does this mean? This means that when dealing with a low vibration Virgo, if this Virgo does not have some type of regimen that helps them to really ground themselves, to be really anchored, um, what this means is that it's it's going to... It's going to bring a lot of chaos or create a lot of chaos in your life um, because, like I said, they have a very busy mind. And if this Virgo doesn't have some type of regimen that will ground them, uh, they will be all over the place. So one of the things to look for is do they take care of themselves? G uh, not Gemini, sorry. Virgo is a sign that is almost... On a high vibration, they could almost take it to the extreme of being like an extreme health nut. 
or someone that really takes care of themselves is very well put together. If you're dealing with a Virgo that just seems like they have their life is a bit chaotic or they have a lot of things going on, you're probably dealing with a low vibration Virgo. Also very easy to spot if you're trying to take out or invite a Virgo out. If they don't have to move certain things around to make that happen, meaning they Virgo is ruled by or is one of the signs that's ruled by routine. It's very important for them, right? Data, um, routine, having some type of schedule. So if you can call a Virgo and want to take them out and they're willing to drop everything in and just make it happen, then you're probably dealing with a low vibration Virgo. And it's probably the Virgo that is all over the place. But if they tell you, hey, well, let me get back with you. Let me see you know, if I can make it happen. Don't take it as a negative. That's very positive because it means that you're dealing with a high vibration Virgo. Virgo knows what they're going to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They probably have it planned out already. And their routine is like something that is almost like a habit to them. You know, it's very, it's very natural, like breathing. So they will uh, try to move certain things around or tell you, you know, let me get back to you. Like I said, don't take it in a negative. If anything, it's positive because it means that is a Virgo that's very well put together. And it's someone that is vibrating from a high frequency. Uh, like I said, they have a very busy mind. So uh, incorporating some type of health regimen in their life is how you know that they have a, that you're dealing with a high vibration Virgo. Now, if you're dealing with more uh, spontaneous Virgo or someone that is more, like I said, they don't really have structure, run the fuck away because that means that they are dissatisfied in their life. Routine, uh, schedules, all of this is something that Virgo rules over. But the younger Virgos or those that don't have that much experience may seem all over the place. Obviously, as we get older, we become more, much more mature. Um, but if you're dealing with a mature person that just seems to be all over the place or, you know, they don't really have some type of structure, run away because because they're dissatisfied, they're going to be all over the place. Therefore, if you bring them into your life, they're going to bring all that chaos to your life. They're, you're going to be dealing with their drama or having to deal with their drama. And it's just, you know, Virgo shadow side could be very heavy energy to deal with because they could be extremely judgmental. They can be extremely like it's always kind of victim mentality. So you just want to stay away from that. Moving on to Libras, how to spot a low vibration Libra. This one is also a easy sign to tell because all you have to really do is look around them. So what I mean by this is Libra is one of the signs, much like Taurus, that is ruled by Venus. It is here in this lifetime to experience love as well as love from others. You know, what others bring to us and what we give to them, which is balance, harmony. So if you're dealing with a low vibration Libra, they probably don't get along with their family. They probably don't get along um, very easily with people. Uh, if anything, people may be very turned off by them. Um, this is a Libra or a low vibration Libra is definitely going to be one that loves attention, but in a very negative way. Like they will do what they have to do to get that type of attention, whether it's good or bad. So again, that's how you can tell it's a low vibration Libra. Now, if, like I said, if you look around them and you see that they, you know, have much like Gemini, a very like, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a lot of friends, a lot of people around them that really centers them, that really brings, or I should say that they bring balance into other people's lives you're dealing with a high vibration Libra. Now, if you're dealing with someone that is constantly telling you, um, you know, that all the drama that's going on in their life or um, like they're very imbalanced when it comes to the relationships they have with others, whether it's with their parents, with their kids, with their uncles, with whatever, um, then you're definitely dealing with a low vibration Libra because keep in mind, Libra is the sign of balance, right? So within themselves, something that is going to be very important in this lifetime is to find the harmony and balance in things. So if you find someone that is very inharmonious, uh, it's definitely the type of Libra that 
you know, will be in a social setting and they kind of think of themselves as better than everyone else. It's, you know, like giving very much the vibes of like people coming to you and telling you like, yeah, whatever they said was a little bit out of line or just very negative type of energy type of vibes run away from that Libra. Because like I said, Libra is here to experience perfect harmony and balance with their relationship to themselves and to the relationship of others. Now imagine on the opposite side. Now imagine on the shadow side. It's going to bring torture and it's going to bring a lot of chaos into your life because, you know, harmony, what's the opposite of harmony? So there you go. Um, moving on now, uh, when it comes to Scorpios and dealing with a low vibration Scorpio, this is another dead giveaway, you guys. If you're dealing with the Scorpio and recently started dealing with them, or you've been dealing with them for a while, but if you look back, when you first started to get to know them, all of a sudden they started vomiting information about their traumas and what they've been through, major red flag. Yes, this is a red flag. I'm going to tell you why. Because believe it or not, Scorpio is a sign that is all about the observation. It is all about watching people's you know, paying attention to people's behaviors and why they do things that they do. A Scorpio that is of high vibration is not going to come and share to you all their personal, you know, hardships that they've gone through that have kind of forced them to be more mature, that has forced them to uh, really work on themselves. It's quite the opposite. They will sit there and listen to you, but they will not share. They will not actively share with you all of their traumas. They're not going to be that easy to share their weaknesses, you guys. And this is some, this is where Scorpio's reputation of like being very secretive, being very sketchy. It's not that they do it on purpose. That is their natural way of being. That's what they were born to do. Why? Because it is about transformation. It is about transmutation. What happens when you're transforming energy or what happens when you're alchemizing something? It is a process. So for them to open up to you, for them to be, you know, wholeheartedly transparent and wholeheartedly genuine and authentic in their openness to you, it's going to be a process. It's going to take a while. So they're not going to off the bat uh, express to you like what they've been through and all of these dark themes. Uh, they're much more observant. So they will uh, be more open to them receiving your information than for them to give you information. With the Scorpio, you kind of have to earn that. So again, if you're dealing with the Scorpio and they're telling you all of this, what they're doing is they're vibrating from a low frequency. And a low frequency uh, Scorpio, their ultimate goal with low vibration is to be able to use your weaknesses to their advantage and turn that against you down the road if they need to. So it is a form or a tactic of manipulation. I let you, I let you in or make you feel like I'm letting you in and I'm being vulnerable to you. That way you can share your vulnerabilities with me. That way I know now what your weaknesses are and I can use that as ammunition down the road if I need to. That is a low vibration Scorpio. So again, if they are more like secretive, more like reserved, don't take it in a negative. They're actually vibrating from a high frequency. And it's like I said, um, even people, I, I know clients that have been married for years, for 10, 15 years, and they tell me, sometimes I even feel like I don't really know everything about my Scorpio. That is how they are, you guys. That is their natural way of being. It's almost like <laughs> peeling you know, layers of the onion that is forever, you know, there is a core there, but you have to constantly kind of, you know, give them reasons to feel like they're safe. So that's a death giveaway. If they're telling you off the bat, you know, I went through this, I went through it. What they're trying to do is make you comfortable, comfortable, comfortable enough to get your guard down. And what does a Scorpio or a scorpion do when they feel attacked? They will sting. So again, keep that in mind. Moving on now to Sagittarius. Sagittarius, the way to notice that you're dealing with a low vibration Sagittarius. A natural's way of being for Sagittarian is to be extremely happy, extremely giddy, almost childlike energy. Why? Because they constantly see the world through children's eyes or through child eyes. 
the world is this masterpiece and there is journeys to be done and, and gone through. So their energy is very high vibration. Um, and they're also ruled by Jupiter, with, which is a very you know be benevolent planet. It is a planet of growth, expansion, knowledge, wisdom. So if you're dealing or how to notice when you're dealing with a low vibration Sagittarian, often you will feel when dealing with them, you feel a little bit like they seem like they're all over the place. You could be having a conversation with them and they will immediately change that conversation or go make a point to another conversation. They're not focused. Um, and, and for for once, that's a dead giveaway <laughs> because again, Sagittarian is the sign of wisdom and knowledge and higher education. Now, I know that for a lot of you guys, you're going to be like, wait, not everyone has the opportunity to be educated or whatnot. But one of the things also is paying attention to their intellect. So what I mean by that is you don't you don't need to have, you know, all the tools. Like what I mean is you don't have to have all the education or knowledge to be a wise person, right? Um, there are plenty of people out there that were never educated, but they have the most astounding wisdom. Um, and that's kind of like Sagittarian energy. It's like they almost give like teacher vibes because you can come to them and share with them a situation that you're going through and they will sit there and talk to you about it like in depth and they will even almost like tell you what they've been through so that you can feel the the connection and the apathy behind it but it's always to the best of your interest because they're trying to inspire you they're trying to uh, allow you to see, yes, I've been there and I've done this and I surpassed it and you're able to surpass it too. So it's almost like the energy of when you're done having a conversation with them. Like I said, if you're going through something in life, speak to that Sagittarian. And if it feels like you weren't, like they didn't really pay attention to what you were saying, or they can't really give you some type of philosophical, uh, inspirational life advice, then you're definitely dealing with a low vibration uh, Sagittarius. Like I said, it's all about their wisdom and their knowledge and the experiences that they have gone through. And they turn it around and make it very inspirational. When you're dealing with a low vibration Sagittarius, they vibrate from a place of um, from a place of shame. So they won't be the type to openly express to you what they've been through because they feel shame about it. And that's when you're dealing with a low vibration one. They often uh, become deceivers or they have a habitual uh, habit of lying or twisting truths around, um, again, because they're vibrating from a place of shame. So that's how you can tell when you're dealing with a low vibration Sagittarius. Now, moving on to Capricorn. How do... Uh, Spot a low vibration Capricorn, another sign that is easy. Whenever you're dealing with a Capricorn and you want to figure out if they're on the low, on the low or high vibration, it's really simple. Ask them this simple question. Is faith or religion or spirituality important in your life? And based on that answer, if they tell you absolutely, it, it is so-and-so, meaning they will tell you absolutely and then give you the reasons why then you're definitely dealing with a high vibration Capricorn. If they tell you, I don't know, or I don't really believe in anything, or I'm still trying to figure that out, then you're definitely dealing with a low vibration Capricorn. Why? Because Capricorn, like Aquarius, is ruled by Saturn. Saturn is the planet of karma. It is the planet, you know, Cronus. It is the planet of time or father time. So it is all about wisdom, right? But within that wisdom, there are restrictions, there are discipline. It's almost like the child becoming an adult, except when you're born a Capricorn, you're born an adult. You have to deal with the difficulties of life, the harshness of life, right? And the only thing that can anchor a Capricorn, the only thing that can really give them the wisdom is experience all this harshness in life so that therefore you're pushed or pulled towards finding a higher purpose, a purpose that it goes beyond you, that is going to really center you to be able to see those experiences as positive 
and turn them into something positive and inspirational. That's where the wisdom comes from. When you're dealing with a low vibration Capricorn, I've gone through all of these experiences. I don't have faith. I don't have spirituality or religion. There is no reason I had to go through this. There's no absolute reason why I had to be challenged in this aspect. So what they do is they in turn turn almost feeling like the world hates them and the world is against them and they will never bring that guard down. That's a low vibration Capricorn. Capricorn is the sign that rules everything to do with structure, everything to do with government, everything to do with corporation, right? So what does this mean? This means that a Capricorn is here to bring discipline, to bring um, structure that is going to help us have a strong foundation or have a strong foundation to build on. And when you're dealing with a low vibration Capricorn, these are the types that I'm sure you guys have heard um, that they could be a bit narcissistic, a bit cold hearted. These are the types that do not mind stepping on people's necks to get what they want or using people as stepping stones. Yes, there are Capricorns like that, but those are the ones that are vibrating from a low frequency. The ones that are obsessively obsessed with money. And once they get to potentially have whatever it is that they're wanting, um, there is no deepening behind that. So they don't really value it. They just assume or feel the need to continuously keep using people for their own benefit. So that's how you can tell when a Capricorn is a low vibration. And let me tell you guys, again, because it is the planet of karma, when they are vibrating from a very low vibration, it's almost as if like they are really messy to deal with, you guys. These are liars. These are the ones that are extremely well manipulators, uh, almost like it reminds me kind of the shadow side of a Scorpio. Um, they will use, you know, certain, you know, uh, vulnerabilities of people and use it against them. These are the type that will lie on their mama and <laughs> swear up and down and, you know, like that type of energy. But again, like I said, if you're dealing with a high vibration Capricorn, their ultimate goal is to succeed or to find some type of stability in their life, right? And those around them to bring stability in their lives. So if you're dealing with a high vibrational Capricorn, this is a Capricorn that is very self-sufficient. This is someone that yes, has goals and aspirations and they will not stop until they achieve them, but also with the higher purpose, which is where we connect the faith, the spirituality or religion that anchors them, that gives them a higher purpose or higher uh, meaning for life that they can use. I've been through all of this as inspiration to get them to where they're going. Whereas when there is no uh, fundamentals of any type of higher consciousness, uh, it's just about them. So there you go. Now moving on to Aquarius, how to spot an Aquarius that is low vibration. Very simple, you guys. <laughs> Okay, so again, Aquarius is a sign that is ruled by Saturn, right? Um, much like Capricorn, though both signs are extremely different. Aquarius is known as the water bearer. What does that mean? Well, if you think about it, it is about metaphysically on a spiritual level, being able to bring spirituality into this earthly plane and find the balance there. So how do we do this? We understand as an Aquarius, it is all about the collective. It is all about what's best for everyone else. How can you spot or how do you know that you're dealing with a low vibration Aquarius? Look around them. If this is an Aquarius that is very private, that is very secretive, that um, doesn't necessarily have any bonds with anyone, whether it's friends, whether it's relatives, whether it's their own family, um, then you're definitely dealing with a low vibration Aquarius. And let me tell you guys, when dealing with low vibration Aquarius, run from that. Because again, you have to understand that, you know, like I said, it is a sign like Capricorn that is ruled by Saturn. But Capricorn over here is all about discipline. It is all about, you know, uh, government structures building. Aquarius is ruled by Saturn, but their purpose here in life is to come and be like, you know what, this is, um, 
the the structures and the rules and all of this over here with Capricorn, if it's not working, let's blow it up. Let's change things. Let's start looking towards the future. It's a very futuristic sign. It's all about, you know, thinking ahead, but at the same time, thinking ahead with the consciousness of knowing that we are all connected and we're all intertwined. It is not about I, as in Capricorn could be that. Aquarius is more about, it's about us. You know what I mean? Instead of I, it's us. So if you're dealing with an Aquarius that doesn't really bring you around their friends, around their family, around the people that matter to them, then you're definitely dealing with a low vibration Aquarius. Also, if they don't have a lot of friends or a lot of so like a big social circle, you're definitely dealing with a low vibration Aquarius. Why? Because keeping in mind Aquarius is very futuristic. It's all about the consciousness and everyone connecting what is best for everyone bringing harmony to those around them. And it is also the sign that rules over social media. So how does a sign that rules over everyone collectively and, you know, um, integrating everyone and let's, you know, bring, you know, bring the top dogs with the, you know, with the, with, with, with the underdogs because they believe in harmony. So if you're, dealing with a Aquarius that doesn't have a big social circle, though they rule over social media and social circles. Hello, you're definitely dealing with a low vibration Aquarius. Aquarians will always have friends that are from many different walks of life, much like Gemini. It is an air sign. It is about communication. So communication for them is very important. But if they don't have like I said, if they're more on the secretive type or they don't want to bring you around their friends, people that are very important to them, which Aquarius to them, it's major and massive. You know, it's kind of the sign that definitely wants their friends to like you because that's how important it is for them. So again, if they're not doing that, then you definitely know that you're dealing with a low vibration Aquarius. And you also want to run away from that. They are both extremes on the negative side or shadow side is as extreme as a Capricorn or even a Scorpio or a Gemini. Um, when dealing with the dark or lower, you know, shadow side of an Aquarius, because these are the types that are very narcissistic, that are very detached. They are extremely cold hearted, manipulative. Um, and they are also having a God complex. They think that they are better than everyone and they look down on everyone. So again, you don't want that in your life. I hope that this was able to uh, encourage you guys to pay more attention to those signs. And I hope that it gives you guys a little bit of insight. It's good to know. I think um, knowing when you're dealing with certain types of traits of a person and what to look for as well. Uh, that will give you the green light or the red flag. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did like, share, and comment, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and I will see you guys soon. Till then, bye for now.